This video will not contain any major spoilers for Outer Wilds until the end, and you will be warned beforehand. I recently beat Outer Wilds for the first time despite buying it over two years ago near its launch. Much like most people who played it, my head has been swimming with ideas, theories, and just general obsession with the game since I hit final credits. It wasn't always like this though. It took me a long time to connect with Outer Wilds. I initially purchased it because on the surface it seemed like a nice relaxing game to calm me during what was an incredibly anxious period in my life. As it turned out though, playing it did the opposite of that. The unknown of the solar system mixed with the impending dread of what is coming proved to be more than I could handle, and over time the very idea of booting it up gave me a tightness in my chest so I left it behind. For a long time. Over the years I kept trying to come back to it and start a new adventure, only to not be able to properly connect with it again. That lingering sense of anxiety ate away at the back of my mind. I had a deep rooted connection to Outer Wilds, but for whatever reason, playing it always felt off. It sucked, and I worried I couldn't push past it. I saw so much praise for a game that I actively couldn't stomach because of a personal hang up. I always thought one day I would come back to it, but for the longest time, that idea was just hell. That all changed a couple of weeks ago when I finally decided to do it. It didn't matter how I felt, I would just push past it and see it through. And after making my first meaningful connection between two seemingly random bits of information, the game clicked in a big way and I became hooked. For a week straight, I couldn't put it down and I constantly sent excited updates to my friends no matter how small they were. I finally got it. What really hooked me though and incentivized every new discovery, every new push to solve a puzzle was the music. My history with video game music is kind of weird. I always shied away from it growing up and thought it was either corny or annoying with only a few exceptions like Zelda and Pokemon. Most times, even today, I will mute a game and listen to my own music while grinding away. And honestly, as I was setting myself up to do that on this latest attempt of Outer Wilds, the title theme crept in. The banjo slowly fades in with a simple appreggio strumming and hooks you in a unique way that's both distantly new while nostalgically comfortable. At least, that's how those first strums hit for me. They compelled me to leave it on, and I'm sure glad I did. In the time since finishing the game, I have listened to the soundtrack every day. It's become part of my routine. I put it on when I go for walks, when I have to work, and I'm even listening to it right now while I write this script. And I've spent a lot of time wondering why that is. The first part of this video I want to explore is the more traditional side of the soundtrack and why I loved it since day one despite not connecting immediately with the game. And this will be the non-spoiler part of the video. The most important decision when creating a soundtrack, especially one that's featured in a game, is how it's used. If you hear a great song too many times, it loses its punch and the impact you might want from it when it really matters becomes watered down by overuse. Repeating songs isn't inherently a bad thing, it all just depends on what you need them for. Mario famously has songs that sit on loop while you run, jump and pound your way through courses and they are all mostly iconic, just for different reasons than say hearing Timber Hearth's opening chords strum again. Even composer Koji Kondo has stated that Mario's music is meant to be viewed as pop music, easily digestible and made for constant replayability. They are there to be a complement to the game and not an intrinsic part of it. Outer Wilds has far more in common with film scores, a style more defined by how the soundtrack works in tandem with the moving pieces rather than just as a support to fill an empty space. Would the reveal in Arrival be as impactful without Max Richter's On the Nature of Dying Light, or the opening scene in 28 Weeks Later without In a House in a Heartbeat? Video games naturally struggle a lot with music working like that of a film since player agency often dictates the pace so you don't want players to miss a huge musical cue, and while it's not unheard of in the medium, it's just uncommon. It's a reason Outer Wild soundtrack works so well to begin with. It isn't afraid to just go for it and let the player connect to moments with music. And even though I sit here and listen to the Traveler's theme and 14.3 billion years on repeat, it's by my own choice to relive those moments and feelings hearing them so sparsely gave me. Because if I had heard them too much while playing, I don't think I'd feel compelled to go back to them as much as I do. I'm not going to sit here and tell you every song in Outer Wilds is epic or special, but they all work in their own ways and do what they need to do incredibly well. 
However, I think all the more traditional songs have a quality about them that just stick with you. As composer Andrew Pralo said himself in an interview with Prima Games, I didn't want it to turn into musical wallpaper where the score is only chugging along in the background and ends up being an annoyance over time. The easiest way to avoid the wallpaper type quality that game music can turn into was treating Outer Wilds like a film. In a lot of my favorite film scores, the music isn't constant. It'll kick in when you need to help move the story forward, making it a lot more emotional emotionally impactful. The core idea that Outer Wilds revolves around is connection. Connection to the universe, connection to each other, and connection to ourselves. So it only makes sense then that the gameplay and music are connected. It's a well-crafted machine where every single part not only serves its own purpose, but is used in conjunction with others. The music is as much a part of the gameplay as the mechanics are, and I think this is highlighted perfectly with that iconic opening menu theme. And settle players in a calming tone, the vibe shifts subtly but in a strong way. The sound of a harsh low keyboard notes start to fade in, and it gives you a strong sense of urgency. It isn't until this sound has fully made its way into the mix that you realize it's not a keyboard making that noise, it's an emergency alarm. The same one that your ship has when it's been damaged, just slow down a touch to match the tempo of the song. Music isn't wallpaper here, it's deeply baked into the core and further pushes the idea that not only is every thread connected in Outer Wilds, all its external and internal parts are too. Mechanically the game is extremely isolating, it's just you, a camera, a signal scope and your trusty spaceship venturing out into the big wide yonder. However, musical cues keep you connected to your roots. If you ever find yourself floating out in the endless void of space, either lost for what to do next or simply just killing time, you can pull out the signal scope and listen to your fellow Venture Co adventurers playing their instruments. It helps you, the player, stay connected. A constant reminder that while you may be lonely, you are not alone. If you take a moment to sit and listen, you can find your friends. I spent some time trying to figure out why I was feeling attached to a lot of the tracks such as Campfire Song and Timber Heath. Then after browsing some articles and interviews, I stumbled across a Reddit AMA with Pralo. After reading past some of the more technical talk, which was interesting in its own right, I found the foundation of the style and genre for those more traditional songs. This is where everything started to make sense for me. Pralo, like me, grew up on Midwestern emo. A lot of you watching right now may be familiar with emo music, the genre that dominated the mainstream throughout the early 2000s. Bands like My Chemical Romance, Panic at the Disco, and Fall Out Boy. But that's not the kind of emo Outer Wilds is influenced by. Throughout the 90s, a second wave of the subgenre gained traction throughout the Midwest, led by names like American Football, Mineral, and Captain Jazz, and more recent bands like The World is a Beautiful Place and I Am No Longer Afraid to Die. It was a more emotive and introspective expression of music than its later counterpart. The genre is still around today and is populated by a smaller but extremely passionate group of fans who will live and die by it being the best style of music there is. So on a personal level, I connected very quickly with the music of Outer Wilds, but it wasn't just me. Everyone who plays it gets a sense of homeliness and warmth from some of the tracks. A lot of that is attributed to Pralo's amazing sense of writing, but also the genre itself leans heavily on creating a vibe that feels like home. With the rise of YouTube and making long playlists becoming increasingly more common, the feelings of what Midwest emo provoke can really be seen clearly. Each video has a sad sounding title with a picture of something that's supposed to remind you of home, either a suburban house that's poorly framed or an empty street at night lit up by lights. It's all meant to feel nostalgic for a time or place even if you yourself have never experienced it. And that's the genre in a nutshell. It evokes a sense of yearning from the listener in an attempt to connect with them so they can feel and relate to whatever story is being told currently. That's why the genre is a perfect fit for the game, although slightly altered to give it a campfire and space sound. Since it's a game that relies heavily on connection, it needs you to latch onto it in any way you can. And the most common form for most people is music. When you have a genre that has song names like The Blanket With The Stars and You Know I Should Be Leaving Soon, it's very easy to see how specifically the writers want you to feel going in. And usually it's some form of melancholic sadness, one that leaves you feeling distant but still somewhat hopeful. And honestly, that's how I felt my entire time with this game. Even in my long breaks between, I was always sure one day I would come back to it and conquer my anxieties to finally see it through. The main riff of Outer Wilds is incredibly simple. It's just two bars repeating of plucked picking on a single note across a banjo. And it's that kind of simplistic songwriting that's hard to pull off. But when done correctly, it creates an earworm hook that's so catchy it sticks with you so well you might want to whistle it while walking around or doing ordinary tasks around the home. 
which is why when that riff repeats itself through other songs, it brings in that sense of homeliness and comfort to what is, often at times, a very isolated and lonely game. Prilo explains, It ended up being really important to have a core idea of relaxation to preface the main theme. Though the Outer Wilds riff shapes the entire score and the main title, gameplay-wise, the music starts with Timberhearth. It gives you a place that feels like home. Outer Wilds is a game about uncovering mysteries and answering questions to things that are so much grander than yourself. It's a game that asks you to go outside of your comfort zone so frequently that every time you need to take a moment to breathe and plant your feet on the ground, the main theme will be there for you. Offering a campfire and a roasted marshmallow while you collect yourself and think about everything that's still left out there for you. Although what's out there isn't always desirable. This is where the spoiler section of the video begins, so if you are yet to play Outer Wilds, please do so and come back when you have beaten it. There is a lot of horror buried within Outer Wilds, especially in a place like Dark Bramble, where the atmosphere is so thick it's suffocating. So while some of the best and most memorable tracks on the OST are like the ones I listed, everything not related to being grounded is deeply unsettling. If Timber Hearth theme is Midwest emo and space, then the Know My theme is the post-rock equivalent. It takes these long, isolated ideas and gives them a sense of unease and discomfort. It's experimental in a way that rips all sense of familiarity from the player and instead replaces it with uncertainty. Every time I was exploring a new place and made a new discovery, it felt like it wasn't supposed to be there. Since most of the game is spent in relative silence, only the sound of you and your ship can really be heard often. When a new song disrupts that, it's both triumphant and terrifying. The story of the Nomai is one of tragedy, so each time you find a new piece of writing or dead bodies floating in a vacuum, it's oftentimes not one of happiness because your newly found progress is underscored by the tragic events that precede your arrival. A grim reminder that while you exist because of the universe, the universe doesn't exist because of you. When you find the grave of the Nomai in Dark Bramble, there's a long, drawn-out synth that plays. It's breaking a silence to show you this is important, but it doesn't overwhelm the moment. It sits under everything you just came across. Then, just as the sound feels familiar, some lone piano notes break the tension and evoke a sense of devastation as a result. What makes this moment and others like it so special is the piano isn't just your standard affair. It's lo-fi, it's muddy, and it's broken, all while trying to play out a melody. And that's why it works so well in these moments, the soundscape is just as confused as you are, as if the notes are fighting a lack of atmosphere and gravity just to have you hear them. The Nomai's emote through their technology, so I created a lot of melodic sound design and deep textures for their soundscape, and wrote a melody and textures to resemble a piano being ripped apart in space. Outer Wilds has the story of two different civilizations coming to the same horrifying conclusion as the other at different times, and the soundtrack plays out as a double LP of sorts to mirror their experiences. They are constantly being interchanged with one another to be in the spotlight and grab your attention, almost as if desperately trying to stay within the consciousness of the player. The Nomai constantly want you to remember them and have you understand this language you don't know. So their themes are weird and otherworldly, but since they met a terrible fate, it's also desperate. The Harthians don't want you to forget home, a constant reminder that no matter how far you go or how alone you feel, you always have a place to go back to. There are two songs in particular that merge both sides of the story told through music perfectly. Those are The Museum and End Times. The Museum is the second song you hear after Timber Hearth has played out a bit. It's also when the statue turns to look at you. It is a literal representation of the two civilizations meeting. So the piano being ripped apart by space has this underlying banjo in it. Just because the two are from different times doesn't mean they don't share the same struggle or anxiety of the end of existence. End Times is the bookend to every successful run, where you don't die at the hands of whatever dangers lurk out in the universe. While it doesn't use any of the traditional instrumentation of healthy music, it does have a melody similar to one, a deeply melodic synth that signals that it's time to go home, even if it means the sun exploding to get there. So while the first time you hear it, it might feel like this moment of discovery, what it's really signaling is that it's time to go back, which in its own right is kind of a discovery. The absence of music helps create a deep sense of true isolation. When End Times finally kicks in, it helps convey a sense of feeling at peace and self-awareness of the inevitable reset. The finale of Outer Wilds is a massive achievement in its own right. 
and both in terms of gameplay and music is a giant culmination of everything you have seen and experienced in one self-contained loop. After finally finding the Ash Twin project and slowly making your way through the wall of text that adds some much needed final context to the Nomai's work, the song that plays is one filled with very disjointed synths heavily layered on top of low drums. The piano keys are seemingly random. These feel like the final moments, the beginning of the end. Not all the pieces are there yet, but you're so close. Then as you grab the warp core from its resting place, a familiar song kicks in. It's end times again, but how can it be when the loop is only partway through? Despite the anxiety replacing the familiarity and comfort of the end of the loop, you need to push through. The end is so close that it doesn't matter. It's around the time of making it to Dark Bramble that it sinks in. This isn't the usual end times theme, but it's something new. It's the end of the loop alright, but the true end. What the song has always been alluding to this whole time, it just wasn't obvious until now. After setting up the warp core and making it to the edge of the universe, you fall through endless space, and then slowly the stars become micro-universes that illuminate the forest of your home. As with all good Midwest emo and post-rock albums, Outer Wilds builds to this fantastic finale. It's a crescendo of everything you've accomplished, all the little bits of knowledge you have gained, and all the dotted lines you have filled in yourself. All of your friends from across the universe have finally been reunited. You're all in this together. Whatever happens next is unknown, but it doesn't matter because they're all back playing the song around a campfire like it was meant to be. While you may have been able to perfectly line up everyone's part of the Traveler's song in space at some points and get a perfect harmony of friends, it's another thing to have everyone together at once. Then, just as quickly as you've gathered everyone together, the universe expands infinitely and results in a new Big Bang. Scored by a tremolo guitar tone of the song of your friends, it's the penultimate finale, a massive soundscape of a familiar song playing in a new way that ushers in whatever is next for time, space, the universe, and you. What's even more special about this 20 seconds of screaming guitar is it acts as a send-off to the developers and Pralo himself. A lot of the early music for trailers and even pre-alpha footage back in 2012 when game development and soundtrack scoring started used an electric guitar, something not really heard in the game until this point. It's a reminder to those who made it just how far they themselves have come. All of these things are why 14.3 billion years is the perfect credit song. It's like the final track of an emo album encapsulated by the feeling of camping in space. Finally, the piano is clearly heard right next to the Apregio picking up an acoustic guitar. The Nomai and Herthians are finally together in some way that feels significant. Rilo pulled every instrument used by the Travelers to make it play out. The ebb and flow of sad to quiet to loud to triumphant perfectly mirrors how the entire final run and by extension the whole game plays out. It captures every emotion you felt through your time in the Outer Wilds Venture Co. I never used to be the biggest fan of gaming soundtracks, and really only a select few stick out to me. But the Outer Wilds OST will go down as not only my favourite gaming soundtrack of all time, but one of my favourite albums, period. The Midwestern emo sensibilities work not only because they sound good, but for the way it plays into the emotions of the genre perfectly. When a game uses genre specific sounds, it's always for a purpose. Metal to sound edgy, indie to evoke sadness, but this is the first time I've seen this kind of soundtrack. One that feels like it's made for me specifically, but it also seems to be made for every person I talk about this game to, even if no one fully understands why. Not only is it a constant reminder of everything I achieved in Outer Wilds, but it's one that always sounds like home, reminding me of where I am or what I'm doing. There's always a place for me to go back to, a constant reminder for pushing through any anxieties that will inevitably come up, a piece of my friends that forced me to play it, a way to connect with new people I meet, a thing to suggest to those I care about, and for that, I will always be thankful.